Max. Lily, five minute warning, all right? Oh! Can't <laughs> think, Lily. No, it's Max. He's got this new app thing. It literally just makes noises like that. It's going to get old very quickly. Do you want me to come with you later to pick up Shona's stuff? Uh, yeah. Can do. Cheers. I thought about making lasagna for dinner. She's like Garfield with a lasagna in front of her. Who's Garfield? One of your mates? The cat. The cartoon. You know, likes lasagna. It's fat. Mum, well, forget it, Mum. David, take a breath. It's a first day home. You know what Aaron said? You don't want to overwhelm her. It's a lasagna, Mum. It's not a bungee jump. So, what about Natasha and this little boy of hers? What about him? You two, come on! I wonder if we're going to meet him. Well, my brain damaged wife's coming home today, Mum. I've got a lasagna to make, so I think I've got enough problems of my own. You all right? I'll try to do three things at once as per. How's your little brother? I'm just off to the hospital now. Superhero fan, is he? Yeah, mad on Spider-Man. I got him off eBay and, you know, I thought I could read them to him and describe the pictures. Well, the artwork's really good. I was surprised. And they say, don't they, even if they're really poly or even if they're really cool. But they... Hey, come on, love. Now, you... You can't read the adventures of everybody's favourite neighbourhood wall crawlers. You're in bits now, can you? I know. What am I like? I'm just tired. Oh, I try to do as many shifts over the road as I can for money for his funds. Yeah, I heard about that. Great idea. Oh, well, I'll try to do our bit, you know. And everyone around here has been so kind. I wish I could do more, but uh, my job's finishing and I've got nothing else lined up. Oh, no, I wasn't fishing or anything. I mean, you hardly know him. Or me. Well, of course, you're not me from the pub, but still. Sorry, I'm babbling. I always babble when I'm upset. Distracts me from crying. Does it work? Actually, yeah. I feel better already. Give that little lad my best, will you? Hey? I will. Cheers. See you. See ya. It's a funny kind of robbery when they only take a little bit of money but leave a beautiful vase. Who'd want that? Excuse me. This is a family heirloom. It's been carried across Czechoslovakia, as was by my maternal great-grandmother, and she was half-blind. <laughs> well, she'd had to have been. I mean, the robbers couldn't have gone upstairs. If they'd seen such a valuable antique, there's no way they would have ignored it. Who do you think burgled us? Fiona Bruce? Oh, I feel violated. I've only ever been robbed once. I was a young girl. I was out at my flute lesson, but Mother was at home, all alone. I had nightmares about it for years. Well, did your mother not hear him break it in? No, it was the time of the Winter Olympics and she was glued to Eddie the Eagle. Right, oh dear me. What did they take? Just a collection of Princess Diana commemorative tea towels and a jam lattice tart that was cooling on the sill. Right, so it wasn't a major haul then? No, they didn't get further than the kitchen. But the police guessed that they were startled by a mother shouting obscenities at the television in the other room and they... They liked it. <laughs> oh, hello. So the police not followed up then? Bit of a low level crime. I'm sure they've got more important things to do. Eileen, if it had happened a couple of hours later, we could have all been murders in our beds. Um, when are you going to fix the locks? I was, yeah, but I'm skin. I can't afford a new lock and handyman. I'll add it to my list. I was going to bleed the radiators this weekend anyway. See you both later. I follow her out. Oh, you know what, Eileen? Gives me the willies. Thinking of strangers, rummaging through me privates. See ya. What's a glamour puss like you doing scrubbing the floors, eh? <laughs> glamour puss. <laughs> Only be turned on by Eau de Toilet Duck by Calvin Klein. They're not open. Tony, don't be so rude. It's got like one of the family. And if you make a crack about the Manson family, we're going to fall out. Ignore him. You know what he's like, first thing. Oh, and anyway, Emma's asked about taking over the cleaning shift, so hopefully I'll be able to hang up my pinny. It's kind of why I came in. I saw her earlier. 
It's tragic what she's going through with Oliver. What they all are. Yeah, it is. I think that's why she wants the extra work. You know, old family skint with the time they're spending up the hospital. Not much we can do, unfortunately. I'm hardly booming here. Well, I wish I could do more to help. Maybe do some fundraising for him. Oh, bless your heart. Isn't that thoughtful, Johnny? <laughs> yeah, he's like a young Bob Geldof. You'll, you'll stop for a brew, won't you? I don't want to be a bother. No, no, it's no bother. I'm gagging myself with all this dust. <laughs> I thought you'd been moving on with your job finishing. I must admit, it's not easy trying to find work. You know what it's like when you've been inside? Career options are limited. <laughs> Actually, you wouldn't know, would you? Just pulling your plonker, mate. She's not wrong, though, your missus. If I could just catch a break, I reckon I could be really happy around here. Yeah, it's really starting to feel like home. Um, I'm just texting Steve to get down here. Everything's OK, isn't it? Yeah. Emma's in with him now. Honestly, if I hear one more story about the Green Goblin, I'm going to strangle her. Bit harsh. She's doing all the voices in American accents. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. And Nick's got a son. What? Nick's got a son. Sam, nine years old. Sweet little thing, although his timing could be better. Lee, what are you talking about? Nick's got a son. I've just found out. He's a clever little lad. Picture of health. Hey, how long does it take to grab a couple of hydrangeas? Sorry. You worried about Steve? No, Mary, I'm worried about the future of the Spanish monarchy. Of course I'm worried about Steve. And little Oliver. Me and Steve. You spoke your truth, Tracy. Whether it's our family or not, it's all we can do. I just can't say anything right. I'd like to share with you something that really helped me a few years back when I was at my lowest death. The words of the famous 20th century Chinese philosopher Liang Qicha. Oh, Nick! He... Hiya. Hey. You all right? I heard about Natasha and the child. Wow, talk about a bolt out of the blue. Tell me about it. How are you and Steve? <sighs> We've had another row. Look, I understand that he wants to do whatever he can do for Oliver. But selling the family silver... Nick, that building there is our security. It's Amy's future. Yeah, he's just trying to do what he thinks is best for his son. Yeah, and I do understand that. But why does he think he knows better than the doctors? He's a cabbie. He's not a doctor. Well, you know why. Of course I do. Do you know, I can't believe I'm saying this, but... At least Leanne and Steve have got each other. We've just got to wait for them to talk to us. To let us in. What if they don't? Oh, look, uh, thanks for coming, Craig, but... You know, forget about the break, and it's hardly worth calling Rosemary in time out for it, is it? Actually, it's not about that. Oh. I wanted to ask if you'd like to come with me to the station. Um... What have I done? Sorry, nothing. I phrased that badly. It's just a body's been found. And since Todd was declared missing, I don't know if they told you, if they find anyone, you'll have to come and identify the body. When was this? A couple of days ago. Oh, I, I can't, Craig. I'm sorry. I, 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 I can't. It's OK. It doesn't have to be right now, just in the next day or two. But just, um... Get my head round this, eh? Of course. I'll speak to my sergeant and I'll explain. Just let me know. I'll see myself out. Hey, any news? Uh, Oliver's just the same, but can you believe an ex-girlfriend of Nick's turned up? Well, that hardly seems like a big deal with everything else that's going on. No, well, it wouldn't be, except this one has a little boy in tow. She claims his nicks. What? Yeah, I know. Do you want to get a coffee? We can go to the canteen. Uh, no, I'm fine. What do you mean claims? Well, I don't know, do I? I mean, I've not met her. Or him, but... Well, Leanne has, and she's convinced that the whole thing's kosher. 
Well, I mean, that's exactly what she needs. Yeah, tell me about it. Just makes me even more glad that we put the fostering on hold. Hey, is she in there with him now? Uh, no, she's in the family room. The nurse is just changing his sheets. Oh, have you got news? Yeah, but let me tell them first. What is it? Something happened. Uh, no, 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 we've got the court date for your appeal. It's the uh, afternoon of October 19th. What? That soon? Well, in cases like this, the system can actually move pretty quickly. Small mercies. Well, will, will we be prepared? We'll be working on that, don't you worry. What do you think our chances are? Sorry, I feel a bit weird. She's not had much sleep, she's not eating much. Lee, you've got to take care of yourself. For Oliver's sake, if nothing else, let me get you somewhere. Just get Nick. I thought he was persona non grata. I need him tired. Please, just get Nick. OK. OK, I'll call him. So he'll be at work? Yeah, St Mary's, Palmerston Street. You can't miss it. It's a big building with a massive cross on it. He's not, and he's not answering his phone. Oh, well, here's Sean. He'll learn now. He'll know what. Well, a gentleman's looking for Billy and seems to have mistaken me for his butler. All oh, right, well, I'll just check my gaze of Manchester group. You see, we all know where each of us is at all times. I I'm sorry, uh, my name's Lenny. Billy's a client. <gasps> oh, so you're Lenny. Well, if he's not at the church, then he's probably out and about doing something very worthy with the needy. But if it's Todd you want to talk about, then you probably want to speak to his mum. Don't want to talk to her or anyone. Look, just tell Billy I can't do the job for him anymore, OK? It's not worth it. think that Ali was acting a bit odd this morning? Well, no more than usual. Do you not notice that she was a bit quiet at the breakfast table? Well, I put that down to jet lag. Plus, I was distracted trying to wipe this rhubarb yogurt off my blouse. Well, she won't answer my calls, which is weird. And Tim said that she's not turned up to work. Apparently, she's pulled a sickie. On her first day back at work? Exactly. And meanwhile, that Lenny, the PI, he said that he won't look for Todd anymore because the job's not worth it. I mean, he, he even sounded scared. Well, what did he say? It's not what he said. <laughs> it's what he didn't say. Well, what didn't he say? Well, I don't know, do I? Because he didn't say it! Well, maybe she's having an illicit affair. Why is it every port of call with you is it's an illicit affair? Well, excuse me for being a romantic. This is serious, Mary. And if that Lenny's spooked, then you can guarantee it's got something to do with Todd. Tracy, I am sorry, Sean. We've been non-stop all day. Sorry, can't take your call at the minute. I must be doing something far more interesting. Leave me a message if I owe you money. I've left the country and I am not coming back. Eileen, it's me. Please, will you call me back or send me a message? Let me know that you're OK. That Lenny said... That... Well, anyway, just... just get in touch, please. OK? Bye. <sighs> Hello? This is it. Why am I moving again if you've been so nice to me? Because it's not your home. The kids miss you, and I'm a delight to live with. It's a big day. It certainly is. And you know where I am if you need me. He's not a hugger. 
So, cheers, Roy. There are a few more things upset. Yeah, I'll come back for all that stuff later, but um, let's get Madame home first, eh? I'm gonna miss you, you massive weirdo. It's the uh, injury. I'm aware. Don't talk about me as if I'm not here. Then don't call Roy a massive weirdo. This is gonna be fun. Go back, put the kettle on. Roy. Look, enough of the long goodbyes, all right? I mean, we live literally around the corner. You can come see him every day. Shut up, you. Roy, thank you for putting up with me. And thank you for teaching me how to play chess. Although I still don't know what the horse thing does. It will come, eventually. Wish I could say the same about her. Look, I've got a lasagna in the oven, all right? I really need to pee, please. I'll call around tomorrow. Unless... I've got your number on the fridge, so, yeah. Goodbye. Arrivederci. Adios. Let's go. Relationship with him, I just not now. I just can't handle it. Sorry. Please stop saying that. Toya said you got a date for the hearing. Yeah. Yeah, it's just blown me away a bit. That's all. That's why I asked her to call you. I didn't think you'd want to see me at all. Well, the old me would rather die than ask for help. Or say sorry for being such a cow. But these days, I'll leave me pride and my ego on the doorstep of the hospital. The new me just needs you. I'm here. Always. What's for the cloak and dagger, Todd? Why can't you just visit me like a normal son? It's not that simple. Yeah, I gathered that when you uh, broke in and left mysterious notes, all Sherlock-like. I need your help. Yeah, and I guess that when you took the housekeeping money. I take it this is about you nicking money off a local gangster? Aren't you clever, Mum? Well, I prefer a successful businessman. I'm wondering if we should send Emma home. We've not had many in. We can't do that. You weren't Scott. She's desperate for the money. She must be otherwise. She wouldn't have off to do the cleaning. Well, we're not a charity, though, are we? We're hardly coining in here. We're fine. And then fridges could do with a good clean for a start. We can't ask her to clean the fridges when she's going through all this with her brother. I'm pretty sure she'd rather be busy. She doesn't want to be sat at home brooding, does she? I would rather be working, to be honest. I don't mind doing anything. I'm sorry, love. We 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 weren't gossiping. Oh, I know. Everyone's been so lovely. I'd still be down in the hospital, but I wanted to give Leanne and my dad some space. I feel like I get under their feet sometimes. Don't be daft. I mean, no one knows what to do or say, do they? In these kind of circumstances. Mm. Oh! I know what'll help take your mind off it. One of the big wine warehouses has sent us these samples through. 12 new wines, and we get a big discount on them we picked to stock. Oh, I don't know much about wine, me. Which is why we're going to try it, right? Educate ourselves. Getting bladdered's not the answer. Depends what the question is. And we won't be getting bladdered, will we? We will be tasting it like connoisseurs. Oh, I love that. Connoisseurs, get us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, just remember, there's a fine line between connoisseurs and getting leathered. <laughs> I think you're doing some kind of stirring your porridge. You're right, Dev. No, I'm flaming not. What's up? What's up? I got a little high high attended poem, and I pick up some paperwork. So I turn the uh, sign on the door to say back in five, and I lock up. Okay, five minutes later, so I get back and some toe rag. 
has kicked the back door down, cleared out the till, and stolen most of the booze and the fags. Five minutes. You are kidding me. In broad daylight? Yes. Well, someone must have seen something, surely. No. No, it's not. I asked the, uh, the, the cabin and asked the garage, and nobody's clocked the thing. Well, what about your CCTV? Evelyn. Yeah. She switches it off and my back's turned, I guess, so she can help herself to the biscuits, and then she blames the power cuts. Five minutes. Oh, come on. What, was someone watching the place or what? Probably kids looking for drugs. Emma, I've got Lemsip and I've got aspirin! All right, don't bite my head off. I'm sorry. Um, can, I, can I have a brandy, please, I mean, for the shock, uh, large? Somebody's been a very naughty boy. Mum, just go, will you? I'm not leaving you with him. He looks psychotic. Psychotic? How rude. Unhinged, I'll give you. Or even just very, very angry. Please, Mum, you have to leave. Do you think I'm letting her go so she can call the cops? Please, Mick. Do what you like with me. She's just my mum. I haven't seen her for years. I'm gutted to have ruined your reunion. Somebody please tell me what's going on. How'd you find me? That boy saw you the minute you got off the train at Piccadilly. Look, Mick, I'll come with you, yeah? She can stay here. Look, we'll be long gone before the police get here. All right, let's go. Just let me say goodbye. Please. It's lucky for you I'm a sentimental old fool. Make it quick. Todd. Hello. You can't oh, go with him. No, we're going to have a welcome home party. It's a nice And obviously, Jeff was determined to be at the wedding so he could make it all about him. He cares deeply about the way things look to other people. Father of the groom, a speech, no doubt a smattering of his corny but amiable jokes. Mm. I'm sure he would have loved it all. Mm. But he didn't have a chance. He didn't go? He didn't have a choice. Abby locked him in Tim and Sally's conservatory. What? He was furious. He was there the whole time. <laughs> I wonder how he liked being locked up. He missed the whole wedding because he couldn't get out of their conservatory. Yeah. been ringing non-stop too. Hang up. Look, surely we can reason with this man. You don't know him. We need to get as far away from here as possible. Come on. It's a granny flat. Well, we call it an annex. I thought it was very cosy when I was in there. Well, you would, wouldn't you? You're a granny. <laughs> it's going to be a bit crowded here, isn't it? What with the kids and that ratty little dog. Mind you, when I was at Roy's, that was hardly Blenheim Palace, was it? What with me and Nina? Have we got any bigger? It's a bit early for me. Well, it's not for you, it's for me. Um, Aaron said you're not supposed to drink alcohol. Yes, well, he says a lot of things, doesn't he? Well, I'd listen to him. And it might be a good idea to keep a clear head while we all get used to this new normal. Don't say new normal, Mum. Sound like Hugh Edwards. <laughs> Look like him and all. <laughs> oh, who's Hugh Edwards? Plays right wing for Sir. Oh. Uh, right, well, I need the loo, so I'm going to use the granny flat. Well, I was worried she was going to be a bit overwhelmed and she's not the least bit bothered. I wish I could say the same. Oh, love. Are you OK? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be fine. You know, she's always been tough. And as Aaron said, this is just the first step. But it's an important one. Well, how does this blaming bush work? She remembers Blenheim Palace, but she can't remember how to use a bog. Mm. Don't 
Don't jiggle the handle, you'll have it off. And then on top of that, the emergency locksmith's going to send me back another 200 quid, honestly. Yeah, you're insured, though, are you? Yeah, obviously, but you want to see what my premiums are like next time around. Honestly, broad daylight. Oh, there's a cop shop. I better get this. About time. Hello. Right, this next one's a cheeky sommillon on Van de Francaise. Eh? France. Come on, Emma. Can you read in the game? I'm offering you an hour of free wine. You could at least look keen. I've still got my last one. Oh, I'll polish that off. You know, proper connoisseurs spit it out. Not do they? Yeah, well, proper connoisseurs obviously don't know how to enjoy themselves, right? So come on, then. Remember, nose first. Mmm, nice. You can't say nice. You gotta give it more detail than that if you're gonna sell it to a customer. Oh, okay, yeah. Right, so come on then, I'm the customer. Tell me what it's like. A nice. Huh? French. White wine. But it's a start. You having a party? No, we're not drinking. This is training. Indeed, there is no rest for the wicked. Have you got a sec? Sure, yeah. Oh, go on, just, just let me know then. Yeah. Locksmiths are there. Excellent. Where? Where? Nestling in my bra. In the shop. Where do you think? We just, you just left the shop unattended. Are you deaf? Or is it this thing? Hang on, hang on. Oh, the, the locksmiths are in the shop. Although I say locksmiths in the plural, one of them didn't look old enough to have a paper round. What, so you can't just, like, text me? No, I didn't want to use up all my textual allowance when it's just a 30-second walk anyway. Three and a half minutes past my shift. I've left you a note in the till so you don't forget when you're totting up. Evelyn, you can't just leave the place unattended like that. What? I don't see what the problem is. There's nothing left to pinch. That's right. Oh, what's this then? Free samples. Actually, from a new supplier who's asked us to sample them. Oh. Mmm, that's a nice drop of serve, that is. Go on, I'll have an hot pot with you. I'll pop one in the microwave. No, I want it in the actual oven. I don't trust microwaves, not since I watched Chernobyl. I know things are I mean, you know, God, everybody pilfers a bit, don't they, from the big supermarkets. The cherry tomato, just to see if it's ripe, or the odd grape, if no one's looking, or a box of dishwasher tabs, bottom of the trolley, but I right. mean, yeah. Oh, oh really? It takes a special kind of scumbag, doesn't it, to steal from a local shop, eh? Talking to myself. <coughs> Sounds like Sally and Tim's wedding was absolutely lovely. I wouldn't know. Oh, that's right. You weren't invited, were you? Because they hate you. I'm going. You're already late. Yeah, sorry. I had to go and see my gran. How is the old bat like I care? Well, actually, she's on top form. I haven't heard her laugh like that for months. Oh, laugh? What's she got to laugh about? Oh, well, I was telling her about the wedding and how Abby locked you in the conservatory. <laughs> Honestly, I thought she was going to wet herself. And you know how infectious it is when someone really starts laughing like that. Sounds like she should be in the loony bin, never mind prison. Not very PC, that, Jeff. Honestly, though, it did my heart good seeing her like that. And then, of course, all the other prisoners wanted to hear what she was laughing about, so she told them to, and the prison guards. And then, before long, we were all just having a really good laugh. At you. We were all laughing at you. I think you're smart, don't you? Smarter than you, that's for damn sure. We'll see how funny you find it when your grandmother rots in there. Have a good shift. I was working for him. So I had some bad bosses over the years. Yeah, well, it wasn't exactly a four weeks holiday and getting off with Karen in HR at the Christmas party sort of job. Oh. How's summer? Billy. Oh, uh, no. No, you don't get to change the subject that easy. I care about them? Yeah, yeah, of course you do. You disappeared off. Not a call, not a postcard. Look, I feel terrible about that. 
Especially about summer. Well, you don't, because they're doing fine. I didn't want to come back and put them in danger. Uh, what, like you didn't want to put me in danger? Well, look how that worked out. Mick he's into a lot of dirty businesses. He needed his money washed. Oh, and I'm assuming you don't mean, like, putting it into bags and taking it down the laundrette. So you know what money laundering is? Don't patronise me, Todd. Providing him with legal advice, putting him in touch with third parties, doing the research, arranging meetings. I.e. the dirty work that no solicitor would touch with a barge pole. Well, technically, I'm not a solicitor. No, technically, Todd, you're a criminal by the sounds of it. Look. No, look. don't look me. Do you know how lucky you are? Lucky? Are you joking? No, lucky. You've got brains. God knows your brother has. And you're good looking. You're charming. You could have anything you wanted. All it takes was some application, honesty. You could have the world at your feet. It's not that simple. It, oh, it's exactly that simple. You, you people make me sick. You sail through school. Everybody likes you. Your teachers, your mates, parents. Oh, isn't he an angel? Aren't you proud? Please, Mum. You are so used to having your own way. You always take the easy option. Quick fix. Because doing it the old-fashioned way, that takes too long, doesn't it? That's for ordinary people. That's for dopes like me and your brother. Please, Mum, I don't need lectures. Fine. Well, then you sort your pathetic little problem out. I don't know why you bother to come and see me. I need your help. What do you want me to do? Invite this thug round for spaghetti hoops on toast and tell him off? I stole off him. Nobody steals off Mick. Now he's put the word out. Putting what word out? Mum. He wants me dead. That is a real help, Scott, thank you. I can't tell you how much the animal dad will appreciate it. Hey, it's me that should be thanking you. You've all made me feel so much at home here. Do you know, I was saying the same thing this morning. It's such a shame you have to leave. Maybe not. I've uh, sorted out my rent arrears, put a few feelers out in the building trade, so who knows? A decent new gig might be enough to stay put. Oh, there's good news, isn't it? Hey, Johnny. Johnny, did you hear that? Scott might be staying around. Hey, we should have a drink to celebrate. I think you've had enough, my little connoisseur. Oh, you can be a miserable so-and-so, you. Are we having that leave for a milch, then? Do you know my Aunt Celia? She was a right snobby cow. She married a bloke who was very high up in instant puddings, so she had quite the opinion of them for herself. Anyway, she used to refer to them, what she looked down on, as the prawn cocktail and leaf from milch brigade. Mm, well, my father wouldn't have it in the house. Well, because it were common. No, because it were German. It was just the same with sausages and Marlena Dietrich. Right then, lady, get down your neck. Mmm. Mmm. Oh. Mm. oh, yes, very fruity. Mm. You know I should be charging for this. Well, for drinking free wine. <laughs> for my expertise. <laughs> <laughs> Emma, do you mind putting the lunch stuff away in the kitchen? It's gone half past. Oh, sure, sorry. Yeah, it's all right. It's just that I think the wife would smash more crockery than cleaning the stage she's in. Sure. Oh, thanks again, Scott. You're welcome. Can we have a word? What, are you going to tell me off for bothering your staff? No. All right, if I take five, love. Take ten? No, I don't care. Not here. In the yard. Yeah, I was on my way to work and I just got a really bad migraine. Must have just missed you. Yeah, jet lag. <laughs> Probably too many free miniatures on the plane. <laughs> yeah, I just uh, just want to get my head down. Uh, could you do me a favour and keep Mary out till at least after six? You know, she can go lump about the house. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that, Sean. Appreciate it. All this time worrying whether you're alive or dead and you come back and it's like something out of the long Good Friday. I had to come back to warn you. All that publicity you were doing about me being missing, the, the, the article, the radio appeal, I was worried it was going to lead Nick to you. I couldn't have that kind of trouble coming to your door. Well, that backfired because he said he pegged you the minute you got off the train. Well, I know that now, don't I? You must have had eyes on me the whole time. 
Got someone follow me to the warehouse. What a mess. I wanted to protect you, warn you. Steal my housekeeping money. I was desperate. Why didn't you wait for me to come home last night? Sean and Mary. The gobs on them two would have gone around Weatherfield within 24 hours. Oh, Mix got ears everywhere. <sighs> the last thing I wanted was to put you in danger. I don't know what to do. Well, I'm glad you're not dead anyway. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to go to the police. Are you mad? Have you been listening to a word I've said? He's got more people on the inside than he has on the outside. I'll be dead within a week. Or worse. What's worse than dead? Mum, I mean it. I need to disappear. Fast. So you can imagine my surprise when half an hour after Dev's shot gets robbed, you all seem flashing the cash when you're supposed to be skinned. Hang on. Let me get this straight. You're saying that I robbed Dev's shop in broad daylight? I know how strapped you are. Let's face it. When was the first time? That was years ago. I was a kid. We were both kids. Do I have to remind you I was the one that went down for that? I was the one that did the porridge for both of us while you built a little life at Riley for yourself. Yeah, yeah, and I've always been grateful for that. Grateful? You don't sound very grateful to me. You sound like you're calling me a thief. I just want an honest answer. If you needed the money that badly, you should have come to me for it. And you'd have given it to me, would you? Just like that? I'd have preferred that than you go robbing one of the neighbours. Mmm. A sharp tang of green apples. And some grass overturns, perhaps. And, and I even detect a hint of sulphur in the aftertaste. How about you? I detect grapes. Mm. Next. Oh, where's Scott gone? I just spoke to Leanne about the money. She wanted me to thank him. I, I think Johnny needed a hand in the yard. I'll see if he wants anything to eat before I put it all away. It says here, drink responsively. It's a bit pushy, isn't it? Respectfully. Flaming cheek, I'm not having a bottle telling me what to do. Mm. It's drink responsibly. I'm just glad nobody saw me coming out the corner shop wearing my stripy jumper and swag bag slung over my shoulder. Look, stop messing around, Scott! Oh, everything all right? Yeah, Johnny was just being a mate, asking if I wanted to lend him any money. I told him I'd had an advance off my wages. Right, well, Leanne said thanks again, but I was just wondering if either of you wanted out to eat before I put everything away. Fine, sir. Yeah, yeah, me and all. We'll be in now, eh? Why didn't you just tell me it was an advance? <laughs> you missed the chance to wind you up. You're such a gullible so-and-so. Come on, I'll treat you to a pint off me ill-gotten gains. I mean, uh, the advance on my wages. Oh, no! Dead? As a dingo. Don't help. Whatever. Oh, you get that for us? Who am I, your servant? I'll get it then, shall I? Hey, if it's a serial killer, don't let him in. <laughs> and if that's me man, don't let her know I've been doing my own roots. We will try to resist the urge. You're not supposed to be drinking. Sorry, uh, I'm not checking up on you. I was just in the area on another appointment, so I thought I'd call in. See how you're all settling in? Start the bath. Mm. Ah, that was a nice one. Mm. What was that one? I don't know, because those labels are incredibly hard to read. Uh, it says pilot. <coughs> Fancy making wines for pilots now. Pino! Oh, big pardon. Mm. <laughs> I got your message. What message? Well, the message to see you. It was urgent. Oh, 
was the emergency? I don't know. I can't remember. What emergency was the one? Fantastic news. They've got the little scumbags. Yes. Uh, oh, that was it. Yes. That was it. You've got to watch out because there's thieves about, right? Oh, yeah, they turned over poor Dev's place. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Mm. Listen, they're where they belong now. Yeah. The coppers, they caught them trying to jimmy their way into the back of Greg's and Badaclava Terrace. So, you don't have to worry now, OK, Roy? Well, I, I, I wasn't worried. I, I hadn't heard of it until 30 seconds ago. Well, now you know, so you can watch out. Did you hear that, Johnny? Coppers caught the little toll rugs that robbed Dev. Right. Right. Excellent. Right. Well, I shall go back to work. Well, uh, you're welcome. Mm. I mean, how do you like that? You try to do a favour for a neighbour. Can I have a scotch, please, Jen? Why are you buying scotch? You've got a shop full of it. Uh -huh. But my place was just recently burgled, Evelyn. So there is no scotch left. I don't know if you heard. Oh, God, I'm sorry. I Ignore me. I just forgot. <laughs> Come on, then. What's next? Rack them up. Right, then. Right, this next one. Oh, it's from Portugal. On the rocks, please, Jenny. Look, uh, I'm sorry, mate. I must be getting paranoid in me old age. No harm done. Besides, you and me both know there's no point getting into bother over small change, right? <laughs> nah. Mind you, if there were 20 grand knocking about and you could get away with it, that'd be another story, right? <laughs> Definitely. Hey, look, let me buy you a drink, eh? Say sorry. As long as you'll have them with me. Of course I will. <laughs> Thanks. That's all I got. Someone took the housekeeping. Glad I saw you. Not just for the cash. When am I going to see you again? Next month? Next year? Don't know. Can't we just pay Mick back? No. It wouldn't help either. He wants to make an example of me. All this time, just nothing. Have you any idea how hard it is for a parent to not know whether their child is dead or alive? Sorry. You know what I've got to do tomorrow? I've got to go down to a police mortuary and identify some poor soul's body and pretend to be upset knowing full well that it isn't going to be you. That's it. What? That's it. The best solution. That's how I disappear. What are you talking about? You still go tomorrow. You tell them it's me. I can't do that. Mum, it's genius. Genius? It's appalling. Taking advantage of some other poor soul's death. Depriving the parents of knowing what happened to their son. Please, Mum, I'm begging you. It's the perfect solution. If you can go and identify that body as being me, th th there'll be a death notice in the paper. A funeral. Come on, Mum, please. I can disappear for good. There's just one more date left before they need to couple up and leave the villa. We've a bumper double bill of Love Island USA on ITV2 tonight at 9. Tomorrow, who'll be crowned our 2020 winner? The spectacular Britain's Got Talent finale is tomorrow at 7.30. Next, a gruesome case for Vera.